today is to show you the actual robo which does the complex uh, oncologic procedures. So this behind me, if you can see, is the actual robotic installation. So it has three components. So this is the actual robo which does the oncologic procedure under the surgeon's guidance. Here, if you can take a moment, this is called the vision cart or the core of the robo. So this is where actually all the energy devices, the camera, everything which is required to run the robo is housed in this small uh, uh, central processing unit here. Behind me, what you see is a surgeon console. So what you can see marked as Da Vinci, that's a surgeon console. That's where I would sit and operate. It is the one which has all the controls necessary to run the robo. So this is what is called a slave robo, which means it has no independent capacity for thought. It has no consciousness and it cannot perform the procedure itself. There is no machine learn. So contrary to popular perception that the robo actually does the procedure, it is not so. So robo is a very, very advanced device which has a capability of performing surgeries which are beyond the capability of the human hand. But it is controlled by the human hand and mind. So uh, in the next uh, few minutes, I will take you through how the robo actually does the procedure. I will simulate a surgery by docking to a model which you can see here and we will show the actual instruments which do the procedure. I will also sit on the console and show you how the instruments move within the human body. Our index patient was a 40-year-old gentleman from Bangladesh who came to us in distress with the right colon cancer. He had been offered open surgery locally and he was very upset because uh, his livelihood depended on him getting back to work very easily and early. So he came to us and we were able to counsel and convince him about the benefits of the robotic system, which include to the patient, obviously, smaller incisions, less blood loss, faster recovery, and earlier return to normal function. For the surgeon, and in terms of the actual cancer procedure, what we see is a magnified view, which is about 10, 12 times magnified. What this means is that we're able to see very critical structures, for example, the nerves and fine blood vessels around the tumor in such detail that it can spare the important structures while performing a radical cancer operation. Also, a core part of any cancer operation, as you are all aware, is the removal of the lymph nodes, which drain the cancer. So these nodes, even the smallest node, with a magnification of 10 to 12 times, are seen in great detail with the robo. It gives you three-dimensional perception, which is like seeing uh, with the eye at open surgery. And they have instruments, which I'll explain in a little bit, which have extreme degrees of freedom, so that they go beyond the reach of the human hand. Additionally, there is also tremor filtration, which means that the surgeon's hand, which have a normal resting tremor, are not communicated to instrument. All of these leads to superior cancer-specific outcomes and very, very early recovery from surgery. Our patient, who we spoke about, who had the right, what we call a right hemicolectomy, in fact, was discharged within 48 hours of surgery and was able to travel back very comfortably on the post-op day five, that's just five days from surgery. His report also showed that the cancer was completely removed and it did not require any further treatment, either chemotherapy or radiation, which is a blessing for the patient. So now I'll actually show you how the robo moves and docks with the patient. So imagine that this is a patient who's lying on the table. This is the patient's belly. And uh, like in laparoscopy, we access the abdomen. We instill carbon dioxide gas to create a working space and then we put in the ports. So these, if you can notice, are intelligent trocars. They have special capabilities of talking with the robo. So I have put in four trocars. One will take the camera and the three will take the instruments. So please bring the robo in. So the robo now has, as you can see, it has got a central pillar and it's got a boom from which the four arms, you see the arms are numbered as one, two, three and four. They are brought in close to the patient. But remember that everything is being controlled by the engineer and then eventually by me. So if you can notice here on the patient's belly, there would be a green laser light. You can see a crosshairs, like what we see in a scope. So once that uh, target hits the place where the camera is going to be, we stop the robo. So that's the limit of how close the robo comes. Then after that, we do what is called a docking. So we take the arms and then we are going to dock it to the port. So you can see that this is a magnetic device and this goes in and clicks. So the Robotic installation gives you lots of cues to guide you during the procedure. 
push the robotic camera in all the way inside. So now imagine that this is within the patient, right? And in this patient who had a right colon cancer, we target where we think the tumor is. So that is the that is the epicenter of our surgery. And once that is done, targeting complete. As you can see, the robotic Doctor arms. The robotic arms have all aligned themselves around the patient to meet the specific requisites of where the surgery is required. Then we take the other arm and we dock the other arm and start docking. So all the other arms are now docked to the respective trochas. So now the robo is docked. So it has the capability of taking in instruments. Next we'll get the instruments. So these are some of the instruments. So you can see the instrumentation is extremely small. It's only about five to eight millimeters in size. And imagine that this is capable of doing surgery, which you do with laparoscopy or with open surgery. So such fine instruments, which obviously get magnified. So this is a scissor. So this instrumentation goes in and then we click it. This is another instrument which is called a Maryland, which is like a small forceps. Again, you can see how fine the instrument tip is. It has got extreme capability of movement, what we call seven degrees of freedom. It can rotate on itself as well. So that's about a 540 degree rotation, 360 plus 180. These are limits which are impossible with the human hand. And this is another one which is used for grasping, called a pro-grasp forceps. So all the instruments are in. So with these instruments and everything being under my control, I can perform the entire surgery practically unaided. With a little bit of assistance from the nurse and a bedside surgeon. So there are safety parameters. So there is a surgeon at the bedside who is going to help to handle the instruments and the nurse. So we don't encounter problems, but theoretically if we did, then we have the capability of overcoming them very rapidly. So now I'm going to sit on the console and then uh, uh, you can see how the instrumentation actually moves within the patient. right? So you can see here, uh, you know, uh, I have a console which has all the controls required. I can control everything about the robot from here. And I look into this vision thing, which has three dimensional vision. So I have a grasper, for example. So I can, you know, grasp tissue. I could, I could grasp tissue. I can go as close as I want, for example. And I could you know, grasp tissue or hold something here, imagine there is tissue. I could hold tissue like that, hold it up and then I could switch to the other arm. So then, you know, this can do the actual procedure. So I can go into the patient, for example, I can go as close, I can magnify, you can see how magnified my view is. Let's say this, this suture here, I could hold it with this arm, bring it up. Then I could take this with this arm, hold it, and for example, I could cut it, right? Imagine this is highly magnified. This is a very fine suture. That's how the robot work. And you saw the scissors and all the instruments, how tiny they were outside the body and how magnified they are, because they are about 10 times magnified. What you're seeing is, of course, a two-dimensional representation. What I see is even better, which is a three-dimensional representation of the same thing. This is beyond the capability of the human hand. So these kind of moments were never possible with any conventional instrumentation. So that's what the robot does. And I hope uh, you will, you know, visit us in person and see probably, you know, uh, actual procedures uh, uh, which are being done and talk to the patients who benefit from these procedures. It's really remarkable. I hope you had a good uh, kind of appetizer or, you know, a good uh, idea of how the robot actually functions. Um, these are actual procedures which were able to do very complex ones which were practically impossible a few years ago. Uh, we are able to reach in places such as the pelvis which is extremely deep. We are able to go to places in the chest for example in esophageal cancer and take out all the nodes there. Uh, we are able to dissect along the important nerves and critical structures. And our hope is with time that we are able to do more complex procedures such as uh, liver cancer surgery, pancreatic surgery etc. But traditionally, we were not able to perform uh, minimally invasive or keyhole surgery because of the difficult areas in which these tumors are located and the critical structures. Now we are able to do practically any surgery with the help of the robotic installation for the benefit of the patient.